I don't get paid enough. This is the battle cry of far too many service members. The reality is that you get paid quite well, but we have very poor financial habits. I'm David Perret with From Military to Millionaire, and I would really appreciate it if you would click that little subscribe button to help out the YouTube algorithm with this video. Now, the moment you joined the military, you achieved level one financial freedom. Any debts you had prior to joining were cut down to only 6% interest, and most of your expenses were covered by the military. Service members have a really bad habit of throwing this financial freedom away though by financing vehicles, buying fancy cell phones, shoes, tattoos, alcohol, whatever. Unfortunately, this seems extremely prevalent in the military and especially in the lower ranks. Now, maybe it's because it's the first time we receive a decent and consistent paycheck. Or maybe it's because we justify the spending with, I may get deployed and die, so YOLO! Albeit, this is much less likely now than it was a decade ago. No matter the justification, it is our responsibility to get our finances back under control. So here are some frugal tips and tricks to keep in mind for service members. Number six is shaving. Shaving is not a large expense, but it is a constant one. From the day you enter the military until the day you retire the uniform, you will be expected to shave every single morning for males. Now, technological advances have made disposable razor blades very convenient, but they have also become quite expensive. A pack of eight Gillette Fusion 5 razors costs $21, and eight of the new Fusion Pro Shield blades cost a whopping $33. In my experience, each of these blades will last about a full week, comfortably, and two weeks at the most. So assuming a blade a week, which is, this is $136 to $215 annually spent on just the blades. A great alternative is to go old school and buy a safety razor like this one. $17.88 for a razor and 10 blades is cheaper than just a refill of blades would be for Gillette. You can also buy a hundred blades for less than $8 on Amazon. Now, safety razor blades are no more than 10 cents a blade on the high end. Worst case scenario, you can buy a year's supply of razor blades for under $10 a year. What an easy way to save hundreds of dollars a year. You can also buy straight razors for relatively cheap. I got a custom engraved one for less than 50 bucks, and there are some on Amazon for less than $20. The strop, which is the leather for sharpening the blade, is less than 15 bucks. Now it takes a little bit of practice to use an authentic straight razor without cutting yourself, but they can save you a lot of money since they don't require razor blades. They're also cool, and since we're all into like the hipster vintage thing, I like them. While we're at it, don't buy cans of shaving cream buy a shaving brush and cream lather. It's much more cost effective and actually kind of fun to use. Number five is credit cards. Wait, isn't this a post about being frugal? How do credit cards even belong here? Well, I'll tell you after you smash that like button. Thank you. Well, credit cards aren't inherently evil. And as long as you pay them off every single month, it's nice to earn cash back for purchases that you would have made anyway. The benefit to using credit cards while active duty is that many cards waive the annual fee for service members. My American Express Platinum card affords me access to lounges in airports, free meals, $15 a month in Uber credit, and so many other discounts that it's absolutely worth the waive annual fee. Since the annual fee is waived for active duty service members, this is my favorite credit card for military members. I have a video on this on the channel too. Again, the only way this makes sense is if you pay the balance off completely right after you charge the card. Do not allow the card to accrue any interest. Number four is uniforms and clothing. Uniforms, especially dress uniforms, can be quite expensive. Luckily, there is an annual clothing allowance that the military gives you to keep your uniform serviceable. Now you should definitely budget this clothing allowance out for the year in order to cover your uniform expenses. To maximize your clothing allowance even, even more, you should take full advantage of the base thrift store. Every base I have ever been stationed on has had a thrift store where you can buy used uniforms for dirt cheap. Buying used uniforms may not be your first choice, but a $10 dress, dress blue jacket absolutely beats paying $140 for a new one. You should join every garage sale, for sale, or curb alert Facebook page for the base that you're stationed at. You would be amazed how many garage sales happen on base, especially during summer months. When service members rotate to their next duty station or retire, they almost always throw a garage sale to get rid of excess items. They will also try to sell all their cleaning supplies and other items that cannot be packed by the moving company. This is a great opportunity for you to acquire cheap uniforms, clothing, and household goods for dirt cheap. 
Number three is food. The fastest way to save money on food is to mitigate eating out. Every time you eat at a restaurant, you are adding unnecessary costs to your monthly food bill. Eating out periodically is okay, but include it in your budget and don't spend more than you budgeted. The commissary is the cheapest place you can buy groceries. They are dirt cheap and your purchases are not taxed. You can't beat that. You should buy your food at the commissary unless you live so far away that it isn't worth the gas. The chow hall is extremely affordable too. If you live in the barracks, I would suggest eating at the chow hall for every possible meal. There's no reason for you to spend money buying groceries or eating out when you've already paid for meals in the chow hall. Save your money. Even if you don't live in the barracks, it is cheaper to pay for lunch at the chow hall than almost anywhere else on base, and probably healthier. So I absolutely recommend you eating at the chow hall every chance you get. Then there's alcohol, which is fun, but so is building well. I will never tell you to stop drinking, but I will definitely advocate for drinking in moderation and not buying drinks at the bar. Alcohol is much more expensive out in town and I would definitely suggest just buying it from the store on base for cheap whenever possible. Also, drinking too much will lead to a uh, lack of productivity the next day, which is even more detrimental than the financial implications. And that's assuming you don't get a DUI, which is so much worse for your finances. Number two is commuting. It never ceases to amaze me how far people live from work in the military. I've had friends that commute over an hour each way, and that is just crazy on so many levels. So for one thing, the hours we work in the military are unpredictable at best, and our days often start, or end, maybe both, when the sun is down. I don't know why you would voluntarily add two hours of driving to that. I much prefer the idea of seeing my family. For another thing, even when you save $500 a month on housing by living this far away, your gas bill will eat up most of that savings there will be additional oil changes and maintenance issues due to excessive amount of mileage that you're racking up on your car. So in my opinion, it, is rare, it rarely makes sense to live more than 30 minutes away from work when you consider both costs and quality of life in the, in the decision process. Carpooling with others is a great way to save money. If you live close to some of the people you work with, you may consider commuting together. You drive one day, they drive the next. The more people who ride together, the more money you can save. You could also just offer to drive and have your passengers pay for fuel. Now the downside to commuting is that you can't leave work until everyone is ready to go home and you may be stuck without a car during the day on the days you didn't drive. Another viable option in most cities is public transportation. For example, if I lived in Washington DC or a similar city, I would absolutely ride the metro or subway to work. Not only would this be more affordable than driving, but you could also read a book or listen to audiobooks and podcasts for the duration of your commute. This would be a very productive way for me to spend my commute and I could save a little money doing it. And if I could save a little money doing it, I would absolutely jump on it. Although there is risk associated with riding a motorcycle, they're quite affordable for commuting. They get amazing gas mileage, even when you ride around at full throttle. In California, there's another benefit to the motorcycle and that's that it's legal to lane split. This cuts your commute down vastly because traffic is no longer a hindrance to you at all. I have seen this cut commutes in half in cities surrounding Camp Pendleton, California. Now, a bicycle. If you live close enough, cycling to work is one of the best ways to save money on your commute. There is not much that beats knocking your cardio out, eliminating fuel costs, and listening to audiobooks all while on the way to work. Not to mention that it's environmentally friendly if that matters to you. You could also walk to work. If you live in the barracks, just walk to work. Walk to chow, walk to the gym, walk everywhere. Seriously, young service members who live in the barracks could survive their entire first term without owning a car. If you're going somewhere with friends, carpool. If you absolutely need a ride somewhere, Uber. I know this isn't a popular option, but it's a brilliant financial decision. Automobiles are one of the worst purchases you can make because they depreciate so fast. And the number one frugal hack is house hacking. The single largest expense for most families is their housing. Therefore, if you can figure out a way to mitigate or even eliminate this expense, you will jump leaps and bounds closer to financial freedom. House hacking is the single best way to eliminate this expense. There are many strategies you can use to hack your housing expenses. You can buy a duplex, triplex, or fourplex and live in one of the units while renting the others out. You could also rent individual rooms in your house, whether that's long-term roommates or through Airbnb. There are so many ways to take advantage of house hacking and there's a whole article on this on my website that you should definitely check out. Now there are so many ways to be frugal in the military and I didn't even get into taking Motrin, drinking water, and changing socks to stay healthy. Yes, that's a joke. Hey guys, I'd be eternally grateful to you if you subscribed and clicked that little bell to be notified of new content. 
Thanks. Have a great day.